Alright, so welcome back to the Super Coach Nuff channel. In today's video, we're going to have a look at our round one results for review uh, and have a bit of a preview looking at round two coming out. Uh, so, normally I'd, I'd try and do this on Tuesday, but uh, life's a bit busy. So, uh, and I guess a bit of excitement as well. Round one, we've finally got some footy. How good. Uh, maybe a little bit of excitement as well because of the the boys, Liverpool, doing the business against Man U this morning. Uh, seven blots, so been loving life. Uh, but unfortunately not loving the, the super coach so much. As you can see, I've limped over uh, over the 1,000, but uh, only just. 1,018, which puts me oh, squeaked into the top 50,000. So it is only round one uh, and plenty of ways to go, but... Uh, yeah, let's have a, a bit of a look where we went wrong. <laughs> and uh, so as the team comes up, you might notice there's a, a couple of slight tweaks. And so I guess that's why the, the theme of this video, when it does show up, will be around uh, trusting your gut. As you can see, it did no good in my head-to-heads. Um, but that's okay. So just, I guess, we'll kick off from the top. So Harry Grant. 91, this is why I had to bring him in and, and get rid of the uh, double halfback situation. Obviously, Nico Hines' injury did help with that decision, but uh, even if he was far and fit, Harry Grant was in my team. And uh, while well, I was a bit filthy that uh, Parramatta, I tipped them, and they, they lost in goal point, I was pretty happy with the extra 30 points that Harry got thanks to his uh, solo effort in golden point. So... You know, the base of 60 plus that upside, you lock him in for the season. Uh, Brandon Smith, 38. So obviously he was uh, HIA there for a bit. Uh, only played 60 minutes. So hard to gauge if that's what he would play. I know Victor Radley spent some time on the bench as well with an eye injury. Um, but yeah, that's fine for now. I know Maiden Wine's already asked about upgrading or sort of trading him for lack of a better word, to uh, Hodgson or Tanner Boyd. He hasn't got. Uh, and I sort of suggested that, well, the difference between Hodgson and, and the Cheese this week was Hodgson got the try assist. Uh, next week that could easily be Brandon Smith. So, yeah, I think that's fine. You know, cop 38. Uh, front row, Satapani, 57. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I didn't see the... The Raiders uh, Cowboys game. A couple of. Actually, I did see the back end of it, but I don't really remember what happened. <laughs> but, you know, that's solid. If that's his four, we'll take that. Big Stefano, 38. Yeah, that's fair. You know, the Tigers didn't uh, probably do as well as everyone had hoped um, against the Titans. But, uh, yeah, 38 for, for 300k. That's all right. We'll take that. Uh, Kepi started off the bench and everyone was a bit concerned about the time, but he still got 40. Um, so got on, did some work. Um, and I think particularly given Manly's forward pack, that'll be the case. I think maybe Bullymore did get on first from what I saw. So uh, he might be second in line there, but again, there's not a lot of depth in the front row at Manly, so happy with that. And then big Frankie Pelle, so... Obviously, as a Bulldogs fan, it's a, it was a bit of a tragic start. Um, and I only got to see the first 50 minutes of this game, and I did not see Franklin Pelle. So it looks like he came on at the back end after it was sort of getting away from the boys a bit. Um, I'll talk more about the Bulldogs performance in the Bulldog Project video. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that one. <laughs> uh, but, no, there, there's lots of positives there, but uh, Franklin Pelle probably wasn't one of them. So not the not the biggest concern at the moment, but um, yeah, just something to, to note that yeah, he didn't get a lot of minutes despite the uh, the front row crisis of the dogs. Uh, then the second row, so Cam Murray, eighty four. That's about what we want again. Didn't see the Sharks South game, but uh, and I haven't even looked at the stats to be honest. We we'll a quick squeeze. So 80 minutes is nice. So you did get a try assist and another try contribution, but, you know, that's the upside that he brings. 45 tackles, so, you know, solid base. So 18 runs, happy days. 
So you can see even then a couple of errors creeping in, um, reducing his score somewhat, but you know, <laughs> it'll take 84, 84 sorry, every day of the week. Dave Fafita, 83. I don't really need Fafita's score. 83, you know, he looked really good playing outside of Kieran Foran. Um, so here, yeah, super stoked with that pick. Not so stoked with Nana. So again, as I said, I didn't see a lot of this game. Um, and I guess, you know, Nanai is really a guy that's, uh, you know, reliant on those upsides, so tries, tackle busts, that sort of thing, and obviously didn't uh, do that. I think I saw he only had a half dozen runs. So, you know, might have to go back and have a look at the full game and see if it was just the, the way it was flowing or if he just didn't get himself involved. Or, But uh, big question marks there um, around Nanai. And so then I guess the first change from what I presented last week in my round one preview, uh, Trent Liero. So essentially what happened Thursday night, I panicked about a bit of a combination of not having Liero because I thought he's going to be solid on that Melbourne edge. Um, having Jackson Ford in the team where I was a bit concerned about his minutes. Um, and so I wanted to try and find a way to bring Liero in. And so as you can see, Later on, I made another move, which cost me a, quite a lot of points this week. Um, but, uh, you know, bringing Liero in, and he got 47, which, you know, is probably about the base that you would want for him. Uh, if we just have a quick look through his stats, so lots of tackles, which was good. Um, and, you know, quite a lot of runs, and quite a lot of work. You know, a couple of little errors, but no real attacking stats there. So that really would be his base. But he's working off of, which you know is solid. Um, and he yeah, played the full 80 or well, 84 minutes if you include golden points. So you know it wasn't the worst move. But then um, Jackson Ford also played the 80 minutes. So and I believe he scored slightly higher. He got yeah six uh, 59. Yeah, so yeah, 59 playing the full 80. So uh, yeah, a little bit of regret there. And then that's only compounded when you see a bit later. So I guess, you know, it's all about trust in your gut. Uh, but then I guess a bit more good news, Jermaine Hopgood, tunning up. That's unreal for, a you know, such a cheap player. Um, but most people have him, so, you know, that's just keeping up with the pack more so than the, the slipping behind that occurred. <laughs> um, so then into the, the halves. So Nathan Cleary was my vice-captain. Um, and I guess, you know, this was about what I was expecting. Um, part of the reason why, you know, he was originally out of the team um, when I decided to drop a, a gun halfback. And uh, just, yeah, the, there was always that worry that Penrith weren't quite going to be quite the same without Coruscant kick out on the side. Um, you know, maybe it's a bit of fatigue as well. You know, a lot of the guys playing the full season, two seasons now back to back, or well, three seasons, making the grand final each year, the World Cup, um, which obviously a lot of their players were involved in, um, you know, might be the case, uh, still a class player and will still score well, so happy to have him, but uh, yeah, just was hoping for a bit more of a spike, didn't quite occur. Um, Tanner Boyd, 35, so I guess everyone was sort of assuming that he'd be on that edge with Fafita, but it looks like with Fermor's injury, they've switched for Fafita over. Uh, and I think playing outside of Foran will really help Fafita. So, you know, I'm glad I got him. Boyd, there's now a little bit more of a, a question mark going forward. Um, just see if, you know, how many errors and whatnot he had. His base, that sort of stuff. It's obviously played the 80 minutes. So, the try assist and the goals. He's made up most of his scoring there, which is a bit of a concern. <laughs> Uh, 22 tackles, didn't run the ball at all. So there you go, that's probably uh, attributing to it. So I guess just distributing a fair bit, doing his bit on the edge. So, um, yeah, we'll give him another week. There is another option that I like at, I think, a similar price. I've got to check the prices. Actually, well, there's no secrets. Lockie Ilias, yeah, so he's around the same sort of mark. And again, like I said, I didn't watch the Souths game, but from what I heard, he's uh, 
he's picked it up a level this year, so have a look at his stats. He got a try, try assists. Um, but let's have a look. Yeah, so a line break. Yeah, a few runs. Nice. So he's doing all the, all the things you want. And South's been such a good attacking team. So, you know, maybe next week there's a, a play there if he's break even super low and Boyd's isn't looking at that, that flash. But uh, no need to, to press the panic button after one game. Um, speaking of which, Matt Burton, uh, he had an absolute shocker. I think that's one where you just say, forget about it, next week's a whole new game. <laughs> so it started off bad and then it looked like he was uh, trying to, to fix it and just kept making things worse. And we all have those days. So, uh, yeah, if we have a look at his stats, I reckon the errors will be pretty uh, impressive reading. <laughs> So, yeah, 16 tackles, a couple missed, four dropouts, but yeah, eight, negative eight for errors and a penalty conceded. So, yeah, I mean, they're yeah, 91 goal. As, as their attack improves, obviously all those stats will improve. So, not uh, panicking on Matt Burton just yet. Uh, Katoa, so he was really impressed at 42. You know, it's probably about right for the, the points we thought he would get. But uh, just, yeah, it looked like he was made to play despite being so young. And obviously the Dolphins having that uh, shock upset against the uh, the Roosters and I guess sort of is compounded by uh, the, my decisions in the centre wing. So I guess we'll talk about the one that's missing first and that is the Hammer. So I'll just get him up on the screen here. So obviously to make the money to go forward up to the arrow, I cashed out on Hammer. And as you can tell, brought in Loomy Loomy. So the thought process there was, could Jag try? Um, and, you know, might just be a placeholder cheap until, you know, better rookies come up. But uh, unfortunately the Hammer made me look a bit silly. So try and a try assist, obviously boosted his numbers a bit, but even taking that out, you know, 30 runs, he was really involved. Um, and that's why, you know, we, we target the center, the fullbacks that play in the center wing is, you know, they're always going to have that involvement around the middle. So another one that I got rid of, Hayes Perrami, actually looked like he had a decent game. Obviously, you know, the lack of uh, attacking polish from the dogs meant that his scoring was limited. Um, but I uh, should have never doubted Wayne Bennett. <laughs> and uh, the hammer. So, yeah, so obviously missed out on those 76 points. Instead, I got Alamotti's 22. Yeah, again, I was sort of trying for the stack there, and the whole stack fell apart. So it happens. Uh, we move on. As you can see, I didn't get much more value out of the bench. Uh, but for the rest, Val Holmes, 63. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um you know, they'll, they'll probably score more points going forward. Tack was a little bit clunky, like most in round one. Uh, Nickel Clock had 70. From all reports, he was busy. And again, you know, busy fullbacks make that super coach cash. Uh, Taruva, 39. Yep, that's good. We'll take that from the, the cheapie. And then on the bench, I guess, Camper, a bit of a concern there with five. But I think he made quite a few errors, which uh, cost him. I think a couple of missed tackles on that edge leading the Tigers' tries. Warbrick, 30. He looks solid, so we'll take that. Bottom dollar, no worries there. And then, you know, Tedesco was captain, thinking, you know, could do a bit against the, uh, the Dolphins, but obviously the attack wasn't quite there for the Roosters thanks to some massive defence from Felice Cafusi and uh, and company. But, you know, they also shot themselves in the foot a bit. So wrong captaincy choice, obviously. Um, something to consider going forward. And Tommy Turbo, 97. You know, I hated to see it being against the Dogs, but you sort of knew. Round one, four points park or Brookie. Um, yeah, he was always going to do well. So we'll uh, bank those points and and move on so 
that's the team. In terms of, I guess, trades for this week, like I said, um, maybe as a punishment for trusting my gut or not trusting my gut, I'm thinking I've got to fix the, the hammer mistake. Um, actually, I didn't talk about Matt Dury. 34, that was, you know, solid. I'm pretty sure he played 80 on the edge. Like, oh, no, 73. It's not quite, but that's good enough. Yeah, it just looks like maybe a few missed tackles. I honestly thought he played a bit better than that. I thought maybe there was a few errors. But uh, I guess no offloads or anything like that hurt him. But Parramatta looked a pretty attacking side from what I saw. Like That's part of the reason why Hopgood was so good. Um, the offloads and, and the like. So yeah, as long as he's playing, I'm happy at that price. So keep him there. So, yeah. so, as I was saying, <laughs> probably looking to get the hammer in. And I mean, you know, if I had to pick one to, to make way in this forward pack to, to make the cash, because there's not a lot of cash here, obviously. Um, the target's sort of square on Nanai. I mean, I could just reverse and go Liero back to, to Ford, which doesn't look like a, a bad shout. Uh, but what I'm thinking is if we go out Nano and in well we could go down to Ford. So yeah he got fifty nine didn't he? Yeah. That would obviously free up the cash for Loomy Loomy up to the hammer. Alright, and then we've got another three hundred and seventeen so yeah, I mean not sure where we go from there. Whether we keep it in in tow for uh, the uh, actually what we'll price was because I guess the other one like that was quite impressive was Tohu Harris playing eighty minutes in the middle. It seemed uh, got eighty eight. Did he? I don't think he even got any real attacking stats. It was all all base fifty four tackles. Oh, line break assist, so take 8 off, that's still 80. 23 runs. So, yeah, I mean, if I could swing, say, the Ikemane up to him, I'd probably take it, but I don't think I'm quite there. Let's try it with the boost. So he's out. Yeah, not quite. A few K short, that hurts. Uh, so... Yeah, I might have to have a little bit more to think about it. I'm I'm definitely okay with using up trade boost first up, especially when you start off so low. You've got to, I think, be aggressive with the trades. The video that I put out on Sunday, I think it was, looking at my history shows that I was best when I was, you know, making lots of moves and, and sort of keeping up uh, with the pack as best I could. So it's going to be a long while to that. Whether it is just, you know, Liero out. Um, not like I said, I was happy with his amount. What's his break even actually? That might sort of give us an indication. Break even of 22, so he'll make a bit of cash. I mean, obviously, Jackson Ford will make a bit more um, based on that result, so that's the thing to consider. Um, but yeah, it's just probably whether Nanai gets another chance, really, is the. The big question I've got to ask you is brought in because of the soft draw for the Cowboys. Um, but maybe sort of having that attacking upside, second row, isn't the best way to go around. <laughs> uh, so I guess, you know, another, another slow start to the year, but uh, plenty of time to catch up. All right, but there's the team. Uh, feel free to comment if you've got any suggestions of, of changes that should be made um, or the number of uppercuts I should give myself for not trusting my gut. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that sort of obligatory stuff you've got to say on your YouTube videos. And aside from that, I'll see you in the next one.